for the video, How to Grow Morning Glories. I am Rebecca, and today I will share where and how to grow morning glories, common pests, and how to harvest and save seeds. Morning glories are one of my favorite flowers. They are very easy to grow vining annuals with heart-shaped leaves that produce a profusion of new 4 to 5 inch diameter flowers each morning. There are many varieties of morning glories. The variety shown in this video is heavenly blue, but the same information applies to other garden varieties of the genus Ipomia that are grown as annuals in North America. Varieties such as Flying Saucers, Pearly Gates, Star of Yelta, and Scarlet O'Hara. These varieties are not invasive like the related perennial bindweed. Location should be one of the first considerations before planting morning glories. They need a location that receives at least six hours of full sun per day and a trellis, fence, arbor, arch, pergola, or other structure to climb upon. Morning glory vines grow between eight and 10 feet tall, so the structure should be at least six feet tall. Whenever the vines reach the top of a structure, they will begin to intertwine again and again to, find, to form a top-heavy mass. They can also be grown in a large pot containing a trellis and pruned to keep a bushier form. I have had the best luck growing morning glories on the south side of the house in full sun. I also like to plant them near an entryway interspersed with night-blooming moonflowers. Planting moon morning glories and moonflowers together will provide you with morning glory flowers in the day, followed by six to seven inch diameter white moonflowers at night. Moonflowers also have an intoxicating scent, so growing them by an entryway will allow you to enjoy them as you enter and exit the house during the night. Moonflowers attract large hawk and sphinx moths that visit the flowers for their nectar. If you would like to observe the moths up close, stand still near a flower and or hold or wear something white. They will be drawn to you and even land on you. Sometimes it is also easy to run into one of these large moths if you are in a hurry, but they are very docile and will not hurt you. Planting Morning Glories Morning glories are easily grown from seeds planted one half inch deep in ordinary garden soil after all danger of frost has passed. This is usually after March 21st. The seeds have a thick wall, so nicking the seed coat with a file and soaking them or just soaking them overnight before planting will help them germinate faster. I like to prepare my soil and then push what I call plant motes into the ground and sow two pre-soaked seeds in each. Plant motes are open-ended sections cut from the middle of a sports drink or water bottle. The plant moat helps to protect the small seedlings from becoming a snack for a slug or snail and serve as a well to fill when watering to keep more water around the roots. After planting the seeds, keep the soil evenly moist and seedlings will begin to emerge in five to seven days or up to 21 days if you did not pre-soak the seeds. Then to one seedling per plant moat or one every six inches or so apart. Water morning glories when the soil is dry to the touch. Don't let them dry out too much. They do like moisture. It's a good idea to water in the evening so the plants can enjoy the moisture longer over the cooler hours of the night. If a late season freeze of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or lower is predicted, water the seedlings in the afternoon or evening before the low temperature is expected and cover them with a blanket, towel, or cloche until temperatures rise above freezing. Morning glories usually begin to bloom after 75 days. If they are not blooming but are growing plenty of lush green leaves, then they may be receiving too much water or the soil may be too rich, and or they are not getting enough sunlight. Sometimes they will begin to bloom closer to fall when the days begin to be cooler and shorter, even if you have tried all of these other three things. Morning glory pests include aphids, spider mites, and some types of caterpillars. Small numbers of aphids can be removed with blasts of water. 
Aphids and spider mites can be controlled with insecticidal soap. Ladybugs also work well for aphids. Neem oil will kill aphids, spider mites, and caterpillars. Moonflower pests include sphinx and hawk moth caterpillars. These large hornworm caterpillars can be removed by hand. I love the large moths that these caterpillars transform into, so I prefer to relocate them to another host plant or to hand raise them. To find host plants, search for hawk moth or sphinx moth on the site butterfliesandmoths.org. Identify the caterpillar moth and then look under caterpillar host to see the host plants. Harvesting and saving morning glory seeds. Your morning glory vine should provide you with many stunning flowers every day from mid-June to the first frost. Each flower turns into a seed pod that yields three to five black seeds. If you want to save the seeds for next year, then wait until morning glory pods are dark brown and crack a little when squeezed between your fingers. Store the seeds in a paper envelope in a cool, dry, and dark location until you are ready to plant them next spring. If you forget to save seeds, lightly hoe or scratch the surface of the ground where your morning glories were planted the previous year and water well. More plants should emerge from seeds that fell from the vines. Morning glories do not transplant well, but if you do want to move some of the plants to another location in the bed, then wait until they have at least two sets of true leaves and use a dinner fork or a trowel to gently lift them out of the ground during the evening without removing the soil surrounding the root. Then transplant them to their new spot and water well. Also water them again the next day and or evening until they are no longer wilting. May you have wonderful spectacular morning glories. Happy gardening.